Welcome back, my nerdy friends. This is Nerdy Dave. Today we're going to be talking about the Unraid Cash Pool and does it work as expected? Setting up the Better FS Raid 1, creating the pool. So here's the same server as last time. We're going to go over here to the main tab. And we are going to stop the array. Now that the everything's back, let's uh, see if we can add a cash pool. Let's go add pool to, we're going to call this test. Ah, uh, damn it. Can't use capital letters. All right. Let's put some drives in our pools. Use these six terabyte mechanical drives. And start. Hey, look at that. There's something is going on with those drives. Son of a bitch. Let's stop it. Let's try this again. Maybe we get lucky. I don't know. Sometimes when you do stuff too fast and on raid, you get some weird results too. Hope this works. I really would rather do it this way than um, mess with my drives I'm actually using. Oh, we got them both working. So maybe I just did it too fast before and that messed it up. All right. So now we want to, so this is all set for its default. So we want to come in here and see what it defaulted to. It's raid one. And here you can select, this is what I'll let you select, single, RAID 0, RAID 1. Uh, single disk is just a bunch of drives. Uh, RAID 0 is two drives for speed. Um, the data split between both drives and it's able to read from both drives at the same time, making it faster. RAID 1 is uh, a mirroring, so it's copying the same data to both drives. So you would expect if one drive fail, the other drive should just take off. Um, only, it, it, yeah, it, on SSDs, I had problems with this. That's the reason why we're doing all this. I want to prove that it works with mechanical drives and then see what, if we could make it work with the SSDs. So let's go back to the main tab. It looks like everything is working. So let's create a share. Creating the share so we can move data to it to test the RAID one. Change it to test. Prefer so that, that pool will be used. Apply. Done. Go back to the share. Let's see what it's currently on the test share, right? Compute. It has 33 gigs on backups. All right, so let's use the mover to move this data over to the new share we just created, or the new cache pool we just created. And um, yeah, and then break the, the array and see what happens. So we just come down here and click move. Shouldn't take very long to transfer 30 gigs from. Did I? Oh, because I'm using the mover. It's going to start with the. Oh, it's going to start with the live drives first. I don't know how much. There can't be that much data left on there. Oh. 
I got the mover scheduled to run pretty often, so this shouldn't. I would expect a lot of data to be on the the cache um, pool. Still grayed out. The transfer doesn't seem to really be doing much. Let's see if it's still. Maybe it needs a refresh. Yeah, it did. Huh, so it won't move from cache drive to cache drive? Is that what we're seeing here? You gotta be kidding me. Of course, I got the wrong damn button. Uh, let's see here. Prefer test. Oh, maybe because it'll only go from the array to the cache. It won't go from cache to cache drive. Oh my god. This is stupid. All right, so come down here. Let's move it to the array, and then uh, I guess we'll do it that way. I don't know. Let's see what it does. So it's starting to read from the pool that has the test folder in it. Still not getting a lot of reads. This ain't working. Let's take a look at it again. I see your disk. Test. Let's check this. Maybe it did it. Oh. Still on the backups. Oh my god. Ain't this frustrating. What the hell will it not move it for? Moves from cast to your right. Oh, it's because I got the wrong. It's going to the wrong spot. Oh my god, this thing's an idiot, ain't it? All right, so let's try this again. Uh, move. Hey, we're getting somewhere. Oh, there we go. This is stupid. I can't move from cache to cache with the mover. And it's not smart enough to know that's where I want it to be. So wherever, oh my lord. Okay. Well, it's only beta. I'm not sure how much of this is. I'm assuming the mover is all on raid. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's all part of Limeware's on raid. Um... The pools themselves are ButterFS. And so the RAID levels we're looking at is probably more of a ButterFS um, testing more than a actual on RAID testing. So far, I'm not super impressed with ButterFS. It's convenient to use an on RAID. I might switch all of this to ZFS once we get through the testing. I've been considering that for a while. One reason why I want to test all this and see if it really is as, as screwy as it seems. Or maybe it was just all in my head. You notice here as I transferring data from this drive here to the, the array, it's only getting 43 megs a second. And that's pretty common. That's about all I see. I rarely get much more than that. I get burst rates higher than that, but I rarely get sustained rates higher than 44 megs a second. And I don't know why. Every one of these drives should be capable of over 100 megs. I should be able to saturate gigabit networking in both directions with this setup. No problem. But as you can see here, we're way shy of being able to saturate gigabit networking. Even on reads, I can't get it to over 40 megs a second. So I don't, I don't know what the hell on raids doing. Um, doesn't make any sense. 
The pulls are faster. Reading and writing to the pulls are way faster than the array. Um, yeah, let's do that right now. Let's move some data to this test pool and see and watch it uh, over the network. How, f what kind of speed we get? We're waiting on this thing. Oh, I gotta create another share if I want to do it at the same time. Damn it! Let's go to shares, add share. We'll call this the six terabyte. Oops. Six terabyte cash pull test. Yeah, let's do prefer. I'm gonna use my test pull and add share right there. Yeah, it looks all right. All right, so if you come down here, we got it set up so we can see the reads. So look at that. I'm able to saturate gigabit networking. Going to the cash pool. And it's so far, it's pretty consistent. This isn't using SSDs. This is going straight to mechanical drives. The pools seem to act correctly. The, all the pools are pretty fast. Read right to the pools is, makes exactly sense. It works exactly like you would think it should. So you can see in a RAID 1, we're copying the same data to both drives at the same time. And we're able to keep up with gigabit networking, no problems. So, yeah, I don't know, I really don't know sometimes. So we'll get some data on here and then we'll break the array and see what happens. Maybe I shouldn't fold, fold with the mover. This was probably faster to do this than use the mover to move the data back and forth. That's a slow way to do it, but you don't have to have another, um, you don't have to have your shares or nothing to do it. You can do it all within the on rate itself. All right. So now we, we copied 30 gigs over in a matter of minutes. Looks like everything stopped, right? So the mover finally stopped. Let's check it. I wonder if you can just refresh it. There we go. Okay, so the mover stopped. I don't feel like moving it back over to the drive, so we'll let everything kind of calm down and then we'll stop the pull. Let's go over to here real quick. So if we go in here, there's no rebalancing or nothing going on. I haven't really messed with anything, so. Now that we have the data on the drive, it's time to break the RAID. We are going to remove the disk to simulate a RAID failure. All right, so let's go back to the main tab, come down here, click stop. All right, so let's remove one of these drives. I gotta set this to no device. And then I think it'll let me do it. Okay. Perfect. Yes, I want to do this. It wants to start. We'll remove the missing caches and then bring the array online. So it's going to turn it into a single disk. <clears throat> it looks like everything started up again. So you notice how it says 66 and 12 now. <laughs> Funny how that is, ain't it? So what it's really doing, if you come back here and look, it's rebalancing the data to turn it into a single drive. Um, see how it's dropping pretty quick? Seems like the less data you have on the disk, the rebalancing goes a lot faster. But basically, it's just going to turn this into a single disk. So let's, while that's doing its thing, let's see if we can mount this. Why can't I mount it? Let's see what happens if I change the name. 
let's change it to six terabyte fail drive. But why won't it mount? Let me mount it. Should be a perfect copy of the other of the other disc. Why can't I mount it? Well, I guess when we stop the array, maybe I can stop the array because that was showing mount when the array was stopped, but now it won't let me do it. I could if I remove the, if I destroy the volume, but I don't want to. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we can check, we can stop the array now. So let's look at this. It should have, oh, see, look at, see the space is back to use spaces back. And this is all set up now for a single disk. So in conclusion, the RAID 1 under ButterFS seems to work just fine with the mechanical hard drives. We were able to create the RAID 1 pool, break it, and still maintain all of our data. Stay tuned for part 2 where we'll dive even deeper into it.